I'll hit you with the numbers first. 361 horsepower, 375 torque. That's 22 horsepower gain over stock, 33 torque gain over stock. Now let's go back in time and I'll kind of give you the story. I really took pride in dynoing at every stage. So I have three different dyno runs. Unfortunately, my data didn't really come out very clear in an obvious progression, but I'll try to explain that. So before we get started, all of these runs were done at night owl performance on a dyno jet, dynamometer, and the temperature and humidity was the same for each three runs. I did it in the spring and the fall and just lucked out with the weather. So the first run generated really good numbers. Now to state another point, these are wheel horsepower numbers, right? Like how did I get 300 and almost 40 across the board? Well, what I was told is that Mikhail speculated that this was a lot higher due to the Vanos uh, being bad and therefore the engine was timed it, or sorry advanced a little bit further generating another 10-ish horsepower which makes sense because I think a healthy E39 with some mileage on it will generate 330 wheel horsepower. So knowing that, doing the second dyno run, I wasn't surprised. My tuner was kind of like, oh, what happened, right? Like you did all this work and that's all you got. Well, knowing what Mikhail said, and I explained that to them, and they kind of, you know, said, okay, sure. So to remind you, this second run was with the new Venus units, uh, the timing chain, full refresh of the front end of the motor, rod bearings, Super Sprint headers, CATS, X-Pipe, and the Eisman Race mufflers. I also had installed the Dynan intake. So that, those are the parts or mods. These numbers, looking back at it, makes sense to me because a lot of people that have done this work and dyno it generally get around 15 horsepower. So 346 makes sense based on that 330 healthy dyno jet number. So next up, I contacted Matt at HD Tuning, and I decided to get an over-the-shelf tune and not worry about a dyno tune. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I really wanted the dyno tune, but the over-the-shelf tune just was just easier, quite honestly, to set up and do. So the only thing I changed was the dyno mass airflow housings. I put those on, and this is what I asked for the tune. Basically, like I said, over-the-shelf tune, and this is where Matt does his magic. So this over-the-shelf tune addresses timing, cam timing specifically, and the fuel, and with the alpha in, it's relying on speed density and not the math sensor. So I'm no wizard here or care to explain any of that to you. So all of that through, what, gosh, 20, 20 years of tuning these things, he's been able to develop and refine an over-the-shelf tune that's pretty rock solid. I asked him, you know, if I did a dyno tune later, how much more could I gain? And he said, maybe five horsepower, LOL. I've heard others say now that you could get more, but anyway, it pretty just goes to show you, pretty much goes to show you that his over-the-shelf tune is pretty dialed in so we got 22 wheel horsepower and 33 torque now the torque number was kind of off the charts even matt said that's an insane torque number i don't know you can really feel it i'll tell you that this is not what i've uh remembered as far as what 30 horsepower bump feels it feels like 50 it feels like a turbo uh you know new new tune on a turbo car it's awesome and I'll have to show you the dyno graph because that's really where it's at it comes on earlier and it's just this big fat torque curve uh, right at the end of two grand it comes on it's amazing uh, hands down I think you could just go with the tune and not do any of the parts and get a great benefit so I'm really happy with the tune I think it really wakes up this car and it, to me it's just this optimal example of the S62 so I'm, I'm pretty satisfied before you dyno the E39, you got to pull fuses 17 and 30. That controls the ABS and the DSC. So pulling those allows uh, your car to run flat out on a dyno. Basically, the front wheels aren't moving, so it you know it doesn't trigger any sort of uh, braking or DSC errors. The one-to-one -one gear ratio for a dyno is fifth gear. Fifth gear is very high wheel speeds. I think some Dino techs don't want to do that for whatever reason, but you should run it in fifth gear to get the most accurate numbers. Here are those numbers I showed you earlier plotted on the dyno graph. So the green one is the final with the tune, and again, just look at the top line, the torque curve. Oh my god, it's huge. So in some areas, it's like 45 uh, torque gained. Peak, you know, is a little bit less than 
than you know some of the the wider range um but it's it's so felt and you can just see it i mean it's glorious it's from like two grand to five grand is this big meaty torque curve horsepower is very similar uh again it's just a gains across the board and then once you go past fours you know where vtec yo kicks in and that's really where it's felt um especially with the headers like after the headers i just felt like the car breathed so much better after four now with the extra power bump it just feels like it's on fire like it's just raging you know towards red line so with this i really feel like my journey's done with the e39 I, I feel like I've done everything I wanted to do. I've built the ultimate daily driver, uh, just an optimized S62, naturally aspirated BMW. I think it's perfect. Um, from here on out, it's really just maintenance and cosmetic things and whatever it needs. I don't know if this is the end of the video series. I still have a couple other things I could go over. But for now, I would say happy Thanksgiving.